my thought is to try to move the dialogue away from recriminations and condemnations and away from the either or. Either you're attacking or you're not attacking, and that ends it. What I want to do is to get people to work to try peace first. Do that. Emphasize the, 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 the direction of moving toward peace as much as possible. My question for Roy is that the key components of that would be calling for a ceasefire in place and calling for negotiations with no preconditions. Are those feasible requests? I'll answer the first part of your question and then move to the second. The Syrians as a, peace, as a people have not had the opportunity to exercise um, the, the peace building kind of communications that would make for civil society because in the last 40 years um, a gathering of six people who are unrelated by blood had to be approved by the government. So there was no significant community-based conversation allowed in Syria, period. My, my security file in Syria is probably six inches thick, as a, an inch per year. Their security state there was phenomenally trained by the Stasi, phenomenally brutal and thorough. So the Syrian people themselves have not had a history of capacity to accrue capacity to interact well together. In relation to the second point, um, there have been various attempts by people I know who are Syrians, who are Fulbright scholars trained in peace building, who are with various non-government organizations, um, meeting with Syrian opposition groups in Turkey, in other places, in Gulf Arab states, in the United States, trying to get coalitions of opposition groups working together towards some kind of ceasefire trajectory that would be arranged um, with the help some of Russia to link up with the, the Assad regime. All of those efforts have been sabotaged or failed for various internal reasons of those groups' vision and leadership. The struggle I have is imagining a trajectory out of the current scenarios now. Um, that, that is a significant struggle I have. So I'm here. I'm not interested in war, I'm a Mennonite, you know, we, didn't, we didn't play the games for centuries. But what, what my major question is, at what point does uh, the United Nations sense of responsibility to protect the ongoing civil wars tragedy kick in, like it did in Bosnia, even though it was terrible. One of my students four years ago was a woman doing peace building to eventually, in 10 years, enable children in Bosnia who were Serbian Orthodox on the second floor of school to finally take class with Bosnian Muslims who were on the first floor of the school and they didn't have playground together and they didn't have classes together because the enmity constructs were so strong they couldn't even sit together as children. That's where Syria is heading. But it is possible to get beyond that. But my major struggle is Syria is not even at the beginning point of that process. I welcome comment from others. Well, I would just, I would just add that a conflict does not have to be heavily armed from the outside. Uh, it does not have to be continually supplied with more ammunition and bigger weapons. Uh, nor do bombers from the world's biggest military need to come in and contribute uh, to the conflict. Uh, and of course, every conflict that has ever been resolved was locked up before it was unlocked. Uh, this is, you know, a difficult situation that is. It has no relationship whatsoever to an impossible situation. Um. Yeah, I, I want to jump in here too. Um, I'm not nearly as uh, pessimistic as Roy is because um, it, it does look very intractable. And he told us about the four levels and whatever. 
But there's a lot more stuff goes on in civil wars than is reported. I mean, I've lived in a civil war society in Lebanon. Um, I went there in 1974, and the civil war broke out in 1975, and I stayed until 1981. And the civil war didn't end until 1989, so it did go on for 14 years. Um, and it's possible that this one will go on for that long. But I think the humanitarian tragedy crisis of the Syrian people is so much more intense. I mean, in Lebanon, Lebanon is a, is a mountainous country made up of people who are kind of basically a bunch of minorities. There's no one single majority population. And they, they, they have a sort of a self-sufficiency in the mountains, that they're not reliant on a central government. Syria is very different. I mean, Syria has a, a, a different topography and a different history and culture, and they are very reliant on central government. And when central government collapses, as it is collapsed now, and you have two million Syrians outside and as refugees, and you have maybe two to four million Syrians inside as internally displaced people, that is a crisis, and that's why you're hearing now a lot of Syrians who earlier supported the opposition saying, let's just end this thing. Let's just end this thing. I mean, the war weariness that took 14 years in Lebanon, I think is going to kick in a lot faster in Syria, and partly because of this, the kind of, you know, the, the social slash topographic slash governmental difference, and partly because of the level of brutality that they're seeing which has been just just horrible. So, you know, I think there are opportunities for this not to take 14 years. And one of the other opportunities is precisely the involvement of outside powers who can stop off the, 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 the supply of arms. I mean, you know, if President Obama were to call in the Saudis and the Qataris, okay, it's true that, you know, they actually fund us and fund our military industrial complex much more than we fund them, but we also protect them in the Gulf. So if he were to call them in and say, we're going to have a ceasefire and an arms embargo for all parties. We'll work with the Russians and the Iranians to get a ceasefire and an arms embargo from their side, and we need it from your side as well. That would be the start of a really useful negotiation. Because this thing is not going to carry on without that arms and funding from outside at this point. The Syrian people would just stand up and, and if they didn't have the arms and funding, they could reconstitute something fairly rapidly. I offered this, a proposed resolution. If you want to read it and then see what people's opinions are, whether they would like to support it. Thank you. Uh, in the meantime, who was next? Yes. 